Bluff Sports Zone. I'm Craig Carlson from the Iowa High School State Wrestling Tournament. 14 Council Bluffs wrestlers making the trip to Des Moines. Our coverage of over 45 matches begins with Class 3A's first round on February 16th. Start things off at 106. AL's Jordan Peterson taking on ninth ranked Bryce Meyer of Fort Madison. Meyer proving worthy of his rank with a 7 2 decision. Peterson sent to the consolation bracket. At 113, the easiest win of the day comes from TJ's Randy Schultz, gets the forfeit win, sending the junior to the state quarterfinals. Move to 120 pounds. AEL's Jordan Easton, a tough opening round draw. Eighth ranked Damon Griffin of Linmar gets the second period pinned, sending Easton to the backside of the bracket. And 132, TJ's Jason Wallace taking on Davenport West's Randy McPhee, and the jacket freshman falls 8 2, sending him to the backside of the bracket as well. His brother Mike Wallace in a dogfight at 138, trailing eighth ranked Blake Spots of Mason City 5 3 in the third. He grabs the late two, sending the match to overtime. In the extra period, showing experience, Wallace gets the points and the win, surviving to fight another day. Two CB wrestlers in the 145 pound bracket. TJ's Charles Weaver, a bit overmatched. Number one ranked Gabriel Marino remains unbeaten with the first period pin. Weaver sent to the consolation bracket. LC's Ethan Ruby can relate. The sophomore falls to number three ranked Brian Warren from Des Moines North, 11 zip. He too is sent to the backside of the bracket. At 160, second ranked Zeb Wall on a mission. And part of that mission accomplished with a 15 3 win over Prairie Cedar Rapids' Casey Becker. Wall, the first Titan of the day to advance to the quarterfinals. LC's success continues at 170 pounds. Fourth ranked Ben Schwery taking on Terry Stover of Waverly Shell Rock. And a 6 0 win improves his record to 47 1 and sends him and his sweet mustache to the state quarterfinals. Move to 195, Lewis Central's Austin Lear with a tough draw. He loses 9-2 to 6th ranked Keegan Long from North Scott. Lear forced to the backside of the bracket. At 220 pounds, Zach Renshaw making the LC faithful proud. The 5th ranked junior cruises with a second period pin of Mason City's Tom Schiffer, advancing to the state quarterfinals. And completing first round action, AL's Jordan Bywater at 285 pounds loses a close one, 3-2 to Urbandale's Shaq Wells. Bywater, the third of three AL qualifiers to lose in the opening round. Following Class 3A first round action, seven Council Bluffs wrestlers take the mat in first round constellations. AL's Jordan Peterson at 106 looking to redeem his earlier loss, but number three ranked Jake Koth of West Des Moines Valley pins him in the first. Back to back top 10 ranked wrestlers end Peterson's chances to place. His teammate Jordan Easton at 120 gets his first win of the tournament, pinning Jake Goddard of Epworth with five seconds left in the second period. He moves on in the constellations. At 132 pounds, TJ's Jason Wallace with a tough matchup. Number 10 ranked Zach Henning of Decorah shows him why he's ranked. In less than a minute, Henning pins the freshman, ending his season. Moving on to 145, Jacket struggles continue. Charles Weaver can't catch a break, wrestling his second ranked wrestler in Austin Boyd of Burlington. Boyd up 4 0 after the takedown. He finishes the match by shutting Weaver out 8 to zip, ending his season with a 19 and 14 record. Sticking to the same weight class, LC's Ethan Ruby taking on Davenport North's Henry Trower, and he doesn't back off. Already up 4 0, he grabs a 2 here for the takedown. Later tacks on three more with the back points and ends Ruby's season with a 9-3 decision. On to 195, Titans Austin Lear in a battle with Austin Ashbacker of Decora. Tied at four in the third, Lear gets the takedown and a 6-4 lead. With time almost up, Lear grabs two more, ensuring the 8-5 win and advances in the Constellations bracket. Last up, the big guys at 285. AL's Jordan Bywater wrestling number nine Jake Oldeker from Clinton. Bywater down 2-0 in the third, gets the escape, cutting the deficit to one. But Oldeker gets the takedown later in the third, winning 4-2. And the Lynx sophomore exits the tournament with two losses decided by a combined three points. All right, Jim, Class 1A first round action, capping day one at the state wrestling tournament. St. Albert's Jake Lewis grabs a 7-5 win over Ryder Clark of Wancock. Just Clark's fifth loss of the year, Lewis onto the quarterfinals. And at 285 pounds, St. Albert's Marco Naughton ranked number one in the state and
and just doing work on West Marshall's Lucas Ort grabs the pin under a minute into the match and remains in the hunt for the state title. So we've thrown a lot at you here. Let's take a look at who remains in the tournament. Of the 14 qualifiers from CB, five are done following the first day of action. Two, AL's Jordan Easton and LC's Austin Lear remain alive in the consolation bracket. Everyone else still vying for the top prize. That hunt continues with Class 3A quarterfinals beginning day two of the three-day tournament here in Des Moines. Day two action begins at 113 pounds. TJ's Randy Schultz won by forfeit in round one, not as fortunate in his second bout. Number one ranked Freddie Stroker of Bettendorf pins the junior in 29 seconds, sending him to the consolation bracket. His teammate Mike Wallace at 138, an excellent start against fifth ranked Nate Harms of Urbandale. Late first period, he takes a two nothing lead with the takedown. Then in the second, Wallace, a little more cushion, jumps out to a six one advantage. But in the third, Harms with an incredible comeback with six unanswered points, he takes the 7-6 lead. The Jacket senior not done fighting, he grabs the escape and the point to tie the match at seven, but with just seconds remaining in regulation, Harms gets the takedown and back points, and despite a five-point lead in the third, Wallace loses by that margin, 12-7, sending him to the backside of the bracket. At 160 pounds, LC Zeb Wall ranked number two, North Scott's Mitch Bowman number five, and Wall wastes little time. He grabs the early 2-0 lead. In the second period, Wall just finds another level. Here he extends the large lead to 7-1, and it's just more of the same in the third period. This isn't supposed to happen in a battle between top five wrestlers. Wall, dominant in every aspect, rolls 14-3 and advances to the state semis after outscoring his opponents 29-6 in the first two matches of this year's tournament. I go out there and I'm wrestling as good as I can, you know. I, to me, I tell myself before I walk on the mat, they can't wrestle with me. You know, nobody's been able to all year. No disputing that, the win moves Wall's record this season to 48-2, and, and as a three-time state qualifier, he says experience is paying off. For me, I went through my sophomore, junior year, um, not the way I wanted in the beginning, because, you know, I'd be out here for 10 minutes warming up, and I'd run to the mat, leave my coaches behind, you know, they'd be following me. Now I'm staying there until I come out here for about two minutes, follow my coaches. You know, for me, mentally, that's the biggest thing is getting to the mat the right way. After placing third in 2011, the Titan senior wants nothing more than to finish his high school career with one completed goal. State title now, that's, that's what I've been wanting. His teammate Ben Schwery also wanting that, and he quickly takes a 2-0 lead on fifth-ranked Cameron Ratchie from Prairie Cedar Rapids. But later up 3-2, Schwery gives up two, and suddenly the fourth-ranked Titan trails 4-3. The slugfest between top-ranked wrestlers continues, though. Schwery recaptures the lead here, and he's in the driver's seat to the semis until the final 10 seconds. Schwery checks the clock, and Ratchie capitalizes with the five-point swing and wins 9-6 ending Schwery's chance at a state title. Rounding out Class 3A quarterfinal action, LC Zach Renshaw, number five at 220 pounds. Iowa City's Steve Ferentz, number seven. Renshaw put it on early and often. He's apparently not impressed by Ferentz's last name or his ranking. The Titan Jr. absolutely handling his business in a 13-3 win, moving him to the 3A state semifinals. Starting at 113 pounds, TJ's Randy Schultz up against Bryce Steyer of Waverly Shell Rock. Down 2-1 in the first period, Steyer with the takedown, he goes up 4-1. Still in the first, Schultz gets out of the pin, but not before Steyer grabs the two back points. Later, the freshman from Waverly gets Schultz in good position again, but this time, it's over. Pin ends Schultz's 34-20 season. At 120, AL's Jordan Easton taking on John Giofredi of Indianola. Easton down 2 0 in the first, gets himself in another bad situation. Gio Freddy tacks on three more with the back points. Midway in the second, Easton in the same position. This time, the outcome is a pin, and Easton goes home 1 2 in the state tournament. TJ's only remaining wrestler, Mike Wallace, facing Waverly Shellrock wrestler Spencer Derryfield. Scoreless in the second period, number 10 ranked Derryfield gets the back points. The Jack continue with the immediate reverse. Later, Derryfield takes down Wallace for the lead and the W. After being ranked all season, he exits the tourney shy of the medal stand. 
170, LC's number four ranked Ben Schreri gets a good start against Mason City's Parker Sturgis. He takes an early 4 0 lead with this takedown in the second. The senior grabs two more but has had about enough of this one, pinning his opponent seconds later. The win secures him a top eight finish. Closing through a second round constellations, LC's Austin Lear at 195 pounds taking on Weston Dubuque's Riley Demmer. They're going to work right away, taking down Demmer, grabbing the two on his way out of bounds. Later, a pair of escapes tied at two in the third. Demmer gets caught with an illegal hold, giving Lear the lead once again, three to two. He holds that lead to the end, ensuring the win with the escape, guaranteeing a spot on the medal stand. St. Albert's two qualifiers taking the mat in the 1A quarterfinals. Jake Lewis at 170 pounds grabs an early 2-0 lead over fifth-ranked Corey Schmelzer of Corning. Later, Lewis extends that lead to 3 at 5-2 and is on his way to another win over a ranked opponent. Until late in the second period, Schmelzer turns the tables and gets the pin. Lewis obviously not happy. After blowing the big lead, he's sent to the consolation bracket to wrestle for at best a third-place finish. At 285, a shame this match isn't for the championship. Number one, Marco Naughton taking on second-ranked Tyler Smith from Lisbon. Smith the first on the board early in the second period, up 1-0. In the third, Naughton returning the favor with an escape of his own to tie things at one. Then under 10 seconds remaining with the match tied, Naughton with an incredible takedown gets the back points. He wins 5-2 to two to advance to the state semifinals. He's definitely the most athletic kid I've ever wrestled, I'll tell you that. I haven't wrestled somebody that can move with their feet like I can because I feel like I'm better on my feet because most of the other heavyweight like to just stand on their feet and not move around like I do, but he's really good at it. I've been wrestling him since AAU. He's a really good opponent and he got me last year. I got him this year, it feels great. The redemption of beating the second ranked wrestler in the state improves Naughton's record to 35 and 0 on the season and continues his quest for perfection. I need to get it done. It's that's what I've been thinking in my head ever since last year at the end of that. I didn't like being on that fifth place, fifth place spot. It's, it's got to be first. Lewis's loss in the quarterfinals puts him in action in the second round consolation, squaring off with South Winnishik's Tanner Phillips. Lewis, letting out some of his frustration, jumps on top to zip. Later, up 2 1, Lewis gets the escape to regain the two point cushion. And in impressive fashion, the Falcon Jr. wins 6-1, ensuring a spot on the podium. So a quick recap again for you. Here's what's going on so far in the tournament. Of the 14 CB qualifiers, all but six are out of the tourney without a medal. All others will place with Wall, Renshaw, and Naughton still vying for gold. Don't change it. More action from Wells Fargo Arena coming up after the break. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Cobra Optimus Wrestling Club. More information at cbcobrawrestling.org. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Holiday Van and Storage, a full-service moving company proudly serving the Omaha and Council Bluffs area. For a stress-free move, 402-734-3834. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by the St. Albert Alumni Association, supporting Falcon wrestlers at the state meet. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Clay's Pump and Equipment, your number one service company for all petroleum equipment, automotive lifts, and Amco Coats tire machine repair. No team covers Southwest Iowa sports like the team at Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. For nearly 25 years, Jenny Ed Sports Med certified athletic trainers have cared for thousands of area athletes and their schools. And our partnering physicians at Nebraska Orthopedics help ensure you're taken care of from diagnosis through rehab. If you need to be seen now, come by our Saturday morning walk-in clinic. It's open all fall from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine.
The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Lynx fans can now log on to ALSportsFan.com for archived and live broadcasts, team info, pictures, and more. ALSportsFan.com, part of the CBSportsFan.com family. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by the St. Albert Alumni Association. Welcome back to the Bluff Sports Zone. I'm Jim Brinklow. Our coverage of the 2012 Iowa High School State Wrestling Tournament continues with Class 3A semifinals. At 160 pounds, LC Zeb Wall taking on Iowa City West's Justin Koch. Scores tied at two in the first. Wall grabs a two with the takedown. He continues to roll, tacking on a couple more to go up 6-2. The senior won't stop until he gets the gold. The 13-6 win secures him a shot at the state title. At 170 pounds, Titans Ben Schwery faces off with Mike Watkins of Iowa City West. Schwery already with the two-point lead makes it 4-0 in the first. He finishes this one with a pin securing him a spot on the medal stand. At 195, Elsie's Austin Lear up against Tan Phillips of West Des Moines Valley. And Phillips off to a great start, goes up 2-0 in the first. But that's as far as it will go. Lear loses the match in the pin. Guthrie Center's Dylan Sur entering the semis having beat the third and fourth ranked wrestlers. He himself ranked ninth. So the road to the championship not easy for top ranked Marco Naden at 285. Or is it? 23 seconds into the match, done. And the Green Monster's incredible run continues to the Class 1A state title match. Minutes prior to Marco's pin, his teammate Jake Lewis taking on his third ranked opponent of the tournament, but ain't no thing, just doing work. Up three to two in the second period, Lewis grabs the pin, and with Clarkville's Dalton Kia Varelli out of the way, he's on to the consolation semis. Still to come, postseason basketball highlights and, of course, more coverage from the Iowa High School State Wrestling Tournament on the other side. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Cobra Optimus Wrestling Club. More information at cbcobrawrestling.org. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Holiday Van and Storage, a full-service moving company proudly serving the Omaha and Council Bluffs area. For a stress-free move, 402-734-3834. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by the St. Albert Alumni Association, supporting Falcon wrestlers at the state meet. State Wrestling Tournament coverage brought to you in part by Clay's Pump and Equipment, your number one service company for all petroleum equipment, automotive lifts, and Amco Coats tire machine repair. Whether you're a weekend warrior or on an organized sports team, however you play, you risk injury. At Flex Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, we specialize in the prevention, recognition, treatment, and rehab of orthopedic and sports injuries. We have 30 combined years of experience, making us Southwest Iowa's leading physical therapy clinic. At our state-of-the-art facility and using the latest technology, we'll help you get back on the field fast. So if you experience a sports injury, you need to see us first. Flex Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your Southwest Iowa's sports medicine professionals. If green and gold never gets old, then St. Albert Sports Fan is the place for you. Updated daily, it's loaded with articles, archives, and so much more. And if you can't make the game, you can still watch it live from the comfort of your own computer. St. Albert Sports Fan, the homepage for the home team. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, what looks good? Our special today is shrimp scampi. It's been sitting around for about a week. Excuse me, what time are you guys leaving? We're going to rob your house tonight. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of a heart attack and other complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. 
This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill Meyer Woodring family owned funeral home serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for the past 105 years. Day three of the 2012 Iowa High School State Wrestling Tournament opening up with Class 3A Consolation Semifinals. At 170 pounds, Lewis Central's Ben Schwery ranked number four in the state, squaring off with sixth ranked Mitch Wontok of Linmar. The match tied at two in the third period. Schwery gets the escape and takes a one point lead, three to two. Later in the final frame, Schwery gets more breathing room and he wins 5 to 2 to send him to the Class 3A third place consolation match, ensuring three top four finishes for first year head coach Duke Burke. We lost six seniors last year who all started, five of them, I think, play, or four of them placed. That's something tough to replace and it's going to take a couple years, maybe another year, hard work from everybody. But as you see here, I mean, the kids can still perform and the kids that we have are doing it for themselves doing it for the program. We stress taking pride in the program. I think they've done that quite well this weekend. Also at 170, St. Albert's Jake Lewis vying for a top four finish in Class 1A. Emmitsburg's Andrew Wellick ranked number six coming in. Lewis, though, once again out of the gate strong, grabs a 2-0 lead. But Wellick, with just two losses all season, he battles back in the second period, tying things up at three. Later in the second, Wellick takes his first lead of the match, 5-4. And for the second time in the tournament, Lewis loses a match he had the lead in, 8-4, sending the Falcon Junior to the Class 1A fifth place consolation match. Wellick eventually places third. All right, Craig, consolation finals. At 170 pounds, Elsie's bench weary wrestling number two ranked Carson Powell of Ankeny for third place. The senior tightened down to nothing in the first, and the struggle continues. Powell tacks on two back points, taking a 4-0 lead in the second period. Schwery's 49-3 season ends with this pin, and at a loss of words, he takes home the fourth place medal. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of disappointing to lose your last match like that. I don't know. At 195, his teammate Austin Lee looking to finish seventh against Nick Jepson of Urbandale. But Jepson takes control of the match in a hurry, going up 2-0 in the first with the takedown. Early second period, Lear trailing 3-1. That deficit grows as he goes down again. Jepson takes a 5-1 lead. Lear tacks on a few escapes, but it's not enough to win. He takes eighth on a season he didn't even expect to wrestle in. It feels awesome just to look at the guys that are much, much bigger than me. Uh, I'm probably 15 pounds under my weight class, and I look at some of the guys and just think, there's no way I can beat this guy, and then I just go out and beat my expectations. The Titan quickly sets his sights on his senior campaign. Yeah, I can't wait till next year. Make some other kid feel worse than I feel right now. On to 1A at 170 pounds. Falcons, Jake Lewis in a rematch for the number five spot on the podium against Corey Schmelzer of Corning. Schmelzer takes him down, leading two to zero in the first, but Lewis responds, he grabs a two with the reverse and it's all tied up at two. He continues to roll, tacking on two more for the back points. However, things change a bit after that. Schmelzer evens it right back up at four apiece with this takedown. And just moments later, the junior out of St. Albert falls to this pin while walk away as a six-seeded winner. I mean, it's hard, but at the same time, uh, if you lose your last match, it just gives you a little bit of a hunger for next year. The Grand March leading the ceremony with place winners of each weight class represented. Including 160 pounds, Lewis Central Zeb Wall ranked number two all season, taking on top ranked Justin Koth of Iowa City West. 15 seconds in, Koth gets Wall on one leg, looking for the takedown, but after 40 seconds, he's not going to get it. Phenomenal balance and defense by the Titan senior. Match still scoreless in the second until Koth gets the escape and takes a 1-0 lead. This match truly a slugfest between the best in Class 3A and it continues late in the second period. Wall grabs the 2-1 lead, but Koth with a quick escape and the match is tied at two points each. That's the score in the third. Wall gets away and takes his first lead of the match, 3-2, and he holds on by the same score to claim the Class 3A 160-pound state title. This is the greatest cap 
to my high school career ever. Me and him were number one and number two in the state. <clears throat> I'm the underdog, I love being the underdog. State finals, last match of our high school career, and to top it all off, we're best friends when we've been wrestling since we were in fifth grade. You know, that we got pictures of us on the podium in AAU, you know, just together, so it's just the perfect way to end my high school career. Wall's teammate Zach Renshaw looking for the same success at 220 pounds, squaring off with number one ranked Willie Miklas from Southeast Polk. Just seconds into the match, Miklas grabs the early lead up 2-0. But Renshaw with an answer. Moments later, his escape narrows the deficit to one at 2-1. Two to one. The two grapplers go back and forth for the majority of the first period. Miklas extends his lead to three at 4-1. to one. Then Renshaw with another response with the escape, and it's 4-2. to two. But late in the first period, Miklas, showing why he's unbeaten on the year, pins Renshaw and the Titan Junior ends his season as the 220-pound state runner-up. I mean, I went 48 and 3, which is pretty good. I mean, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of way, how I got. I mean, I'm proud of my place, and it's not what I wanted, but it's still better than. St. Albert's Marco Nodden at 285 pounds, taking on his third top 10 opponent of the tournament, sixth ranked Brandon McCracken from Appleton Parkersburg. Mongo, straight to work though, grabs the 2 0 lead right out of the gates. Midway through the first, McCracken answers with the escape to narrow the margin to 1 at 2 1. That's the score in the second, and that's when Nodden just turns it on, grabs the back points here to go up 5 to 1. The Falcon senior didn't give up a single takedown all season and does it in the finals either, rolling to an 11-2 win to become the Class 1A 285-pound state champion. I've won it ever since I was a kid. I won it in sixth grade in AAU, and that feeling was just amazing. I wanted to have it again in at the high school level. It's just amazing. It's, I wasted all my emotion in that in that quarterfinal match though because I knew I knew he was going to be the toughest opponent I was going to have to wrestle. Just looking at the bracket, I knew it was going to fall right there. And if I could get through that, I figured I could take it all. And I'm just glad that I got through that. Had a little celebration, made it the whole way up on top of the podium. When we return, some postseason hoops action. We'll update you on the latest in just a few. What does the future hold for you? I can learn. I can lead. I can play. I can grow. Put yourself in a great place. Iowa Western. Classes are forming now in more than 80 areas of study. Learn more, a lot more at iwcc.edu. I can succeed. Yes, wrestling a huge deal this past week, but postseason basketball also taking place a little closer to home. Abraham Lincoln hosting Thomas Jefferson Wednesday, February 15th. AL coming in with a 9-13 record. The Jackets still searching for win number one of the year. TJ off to a nice start in this one, though, with a score right away. Bounce pass to sophomore Misty Cackley for two. Jackets up two zip. The Lynx hushing TJ with a 6-2 run to close out an extremely low-scoring first quarter. Mackenzie Bolton with two. AL leading 6-4. Lynx offense finally heating up in the second quarter with a 10-0 run on the Jackets. Forward Delaney Bolden chipping in with a steal and layup for two, pushing AL's lead to 16-4. TJ attempting to slash the deficit, going on an 8-4 run of their own. Sophomore Samantha Arnold taking advantage and tossing up two, making the score 20-12, Lynx at the half. Abe Lincoln, though, back to work to open the second stanza. Adding eight more to their lead, Bolton again stunning the Jackets, batting the ball away and putting up two more of her game-high 15 points. AL ahead, 32-16. Lynx not finished yet, adding another 8-0 run on Thomas Jefferson. This time, Taylor Valentine with a field goal. AL rounding out the third quarter, up 38-16. Lynx blowing out the fourth quarter as well, outscoring the Jackets by 14 points, bringing the final score to 63-25. TJ finishes the season winless at 0-21 on the year. AL, though, in high spirits for a rematch against rival Lewis Central in the region semifinals. It will be a tough game, but I feel like we can pull it off and just gotta, <laughs> we just got to play hard and as a team, and I think we can win. I'm feeling good. If we practice really well, our defense will be good, and 
I think we can do it. We're looking forward to that opportunity, you know. I mean, this is one game the girls were looking forward to, to get this chance to go against LC one more time and stuff. It should be a great battle. After the blowout, Abraham Lincoln heads over to 4A number 9 Lewis Central for the rematch of the season. Link scoring right off the opening tip. Junior Delaney Bolden putting two on the board. AL up two zip. Titans not standing for that, busting off a 7-2 run on the links. Liz Seeleman helping out off the rebound. Tosses up the easy bucket. Round out the first quarter, Titans up 9-4. In the second period, a back and forth battle. Natalie Madsen putting up two for the home team, pushing their lead to eight. Titans up just 15-8 at the break. Low scoring ball game playing into the hands of the underdogs. And the Lynx come out early in the third with a bucket from senior Jasmine Flynn, cutting AL's deficit to just five. LC not finding their rhythm until late in the third quarter, adding six unanswered points to their lead. Madsen again with the field goal. Titans up 11, 21-10. Lewis Central exploding out of the gates in the final stanza, busting off a 10-0 run. Seeleman chipping in another two of her game-high 14. Titans ultimately outscoring the Lynx 17-7 in the fourth to win easily 40-17. Lewis Central improves to 19-2 and advances to the sub-state final in West Des Moines, taking on state number four, Ankeny, February 21st. We just all came together as a team and we said we were going to do this. It's our second goal of the season. We've already accomplished our first one. Our next one's to go to state and this is the first step to get there. It's amazing. My senior year, that's been one of my goals always is to make it to state and get this far. And it's the farthest I've ever been and I'm just, I'm so ecstatic for the team. Like, I think we can keep advancing and we just got to play hard. We know going over there is going to be a dog fight no matter who we see. And we're going to have to play our best game of the year to get there. But uh, I don't put anything past these kids because they've achieved a lot of things that nobody gave, no, nobody ever thought they would achieve at the beginning of the year. In other postseason basketball action, 16-6 and six, Lewis Central hosting Abraham Lincoln in the sub-state quarterfinals. Titans jumping to an early lead going on a 6-2 and two run. Junior Alex Reed with the easy layup. It's 8-5 to five and Lewis Central with another run, this time 7 unanswered. And Reed again on the inside. Ending the first quarter, Titans up 16-5. to five. In the second quarter, AL trying to keep up with LC, hitting back-to-back three-pointers, including this one from Joe Northup, links down by 9, 22 to 13. But the Titans extend their lead to 13 right before the break. They head to the locker room up 29 to 16. That lead continues to expand. LC bursts out of the half with three baskets in just 30 seconds. Lincoln Rodenberg and Josiah Shepard helping out. Just one slice of the Titans' 21 to one run to open the third period. Home team leading 54 to 29. The story remains the same in the fourth. Lewis Central blows past the Lynx in a 12-1 run. Rodenberg with another two of his 13 total points on the night. Final score, 69-30. At halftime, Coach Miller always says at the end of his speech, he says, come out in the first three minutes and that can make or break the game. And we came out aggressive, got a couple of steals and um, transition baskets, and we made it happen. Oh, we just want to we just want to win in advance. You know, anytime you get to play one more game, um, you're glad to still be playing. Lewis Central taking on Sioux City North, whose record stands at 10 and 11 in the Substate Semifinals, February 24th. All right, thanks, Sasha. Another postseason basketball. St. Albert girls defeated by Missouri Valley, February 14th. The Saints end their season at 10 and 10. St. Albert boys beating up Riverside 71-52 February 16th, advancing them to the district semifinals against East Mills February 21st. And Thomas Jefferson ending their season with a loss to Sioux City West. Wolverines toppled the Jackets 65-54. TJ closes out the season at 3-19. That's it for tonight's broadcast. Thanks, as always, for checking out the BSZ. Until next time. We're out.